Good evening everyone. This is Bill Breeden and welcome to Constellation Tour number 26. Tonight we're going to go over the constellation Aquilius, the little horse. Aquilius is located in the northern celestial hemisphere and it is best viewed between August and October. So it is a late summer and autumn constellation. So I have Stellarium set up here for September the 15th, 2020 at 9.27 p.m. Set up for suburban skies. So there's moderate light pollution. Okay, Aquilius would, to say that it's an obscure constellation would be an understatement, um, even though it is a, a northern celestial hemisphere constellation. It's in sort of a neglected part of the sky, and not only that, it's small, and it's faint, and there are no real, there's no real distinct pattern to it. So let's let's find the area of sky where you can where you can find Aquilius. So I'm looking east, and since we're we're in late summer, early fall, we're going to look for the Great Square of Pegasus. It's right here. And you see these four stars. This big square that's mostly empty. That would be Pegasus, the winged horse. So let's look up a little higher, and. In one of my earlier constellation tours, I pointed out this bright star way over here as being part of Pegasus. That is the star Enif, or Epsilon Pegasi. So even though this is the great square, the area we tend to think of as Pegasus, Pegasus actually extends way over here. So let Enif be your signpost to Aquilius. And you can point out Aquilius to people in the night sky and impress them with such a small, faint, obscure constellation. So find the great square of Pegasus. Find this bright star. Just follow these stars at the bottom of the square until you come to this, this bright star of Enif. And then keep going. And you'll see a star that's a little bit fainter than Enif. That is Alpha Aquilae. Um, or Catalpha. That's actually part of Aquilius. And, and you can see, to, to make sure you're in the right part of the sky, look just above this area and, and look for this little flag shape here. That's Delphinus. And we went over that one in a previous tour. That's, that's small and faint, but believe it or not, that one's not obscure. Most most people have seen Delphinus because of this distinct grouping of stars. The same can't be said about Aquilius, unfortunately. So let's, let's look at the constellation lines. Okay, and you can see here's the great square, and here's Enif in Pegasus right here, Epsilon Pegasi. And then this, this star, as you keep going, you come to this star. This is the alpha star in Aquilius, alpha, um, alpha Aquilae, or Catalpha. And Aquilius is just this little part of the sky here. Let's have a look at the mythical figures. And <laughs> I sort of think of it as a second, a second horse here to Pegasus. You've got the, the winged horse of Pegasus here, and then you have, you have an extra horse head. So I guess there weren't enough horses in this part of the sky, so they just threw another horse head out there. I don't get it. I'm sure there's some history to it. But anyway, this part of the sky is Aquilius. And here are the boundaries of Aquilius, just this little square here. So. Even as small as Delphinus was, um, Aquilius is only about half the size of Delphinus, if that. So 
So let's, we're going to have plenty of time here because this is such a small constellation. There's, there's not a whole lot to see, although there are two, two attractive double stars. There are no Messier objects. There are no notable deep sky objects. So let's go over finding it again. Find the great square of Pegasus, make the leap over here to this bright star Enif, and then make another leap here to a, a star that does stand out, although it is fainter, and that is Alpha Equally. So Alpha is also listed as a double star here in the software. It's magnitude four, it's 190 light years away, it must be a really, really tight double because I have not been able to split it. Let's point our telescope at it in the finder. And it, it doesn't split in the finder. And surprise, it doesn't even split in a 13 millimeter Nagler. So if we try to split it manually, I don't think it's alpha splits. No, it's listed as a double star, but it must be really, really tight double. So if you want to point your telescope back at alpha, at least you can say you've seen the alpha star in Aquilius, a rather obscure constellation. So if the alpha star doesn't split, what about the other two that that do that one of them is gamma equally and to show this it's easier to put the constellation lines up and let's move into a binocular field here field of view and let's just pan around you can almost see the whole constellation of Aquilius in binoculars so let's see, gamma splits, and I believe gamma is this star right here. It actually looks nice just through binoculars, but I do believe it splits again. So there's gamma equally. And let's see. Yeah, in, in binoculars or in the finder scope, you will see a really attractive double star there. But I think gamma splits again. And that's what it would look like in a 13 millimeter Nagler. You can see the, the companion here, six equally, and then even another background star. I think, I think gamma splits again. If you put real high power on it, I think it'll split again for you. Yeah, it does. It takes, takes quite a bit of power, but gamma does split again. It looks like the, uh, the primary star is fifth magnitude. Let's see, that's gamma. I don't know if they give you a... Yeah, the companion star is magnitude nine. So put some high power on it, 10 millimeter eyepiece, or a, an eight millimeter, a seven millimeter, something with some power. See if you can split gamma equally. Okay, I have one more double star in Aquilius. It's, it's Epsilon Aquili. So let's pan around with our, with our binocular field here. Let's get it back to six degrees. Let's see, this one's Gamma. And I think this one, this one was Alpha, I believe. Yeah, that's Catalpha. So you have, I think this one over here is Epsilon. Equally? No, that's three equally. That's four. Was it way over here? There it is. Okay, I was just testing my memory. Here's Epsilon equally way over here in the far reaches of Aquilius. And let's look at that with the with the 13 millimeter Nagler. That looks really nice. You've got a companion next to it, and it looks like Epsilon splits again for you. Yeah, this is what you're seeing in a Nagler, and I think Epsilon will split again for you. So you're going to get a view more like that. When you put medium to high power, maybe a 12 or 13 millimeter eyepiece, 
the simulation with this 13 millimeter doesn't show it splitting, but you probably can do it in the, in reality. Okay, let's let's go back to a naked eye view. And I've kind of left the constellation boundaries up because it's kind of hard to tell where Aquilius is. So let's make it dark. Let's see how that affects our view of this constellation. Let's try to find it again from scratch. So we've got the great square of Pegasus here. And you make the jump from these two stars up to Enif. And then the next brightest star on, the, on that, in that same direction should be Catalpha. Okay, so we were able to find it. And under a, under a dark sky, you can see the little horse head here. It's this little parallelogram. So they're actually doing this part of the horse head here. This is the snout. This is, I guess, the eye and the chin. No, not the chin, right? Just right here. I don't know. But um, there's your little horse head figure. It looks like a little, sort of like a little parallelogram. And Epsilon, I believe. Let's look, let's look back through the finder. So you find Enif. You come over here. And I think there's Catalpha, so that's so it's farther over here. Is it this one? Because there's some stars beside it. No. There it is. There's Epsilon. So this is gonna be a little this is gonna be a star hop for you. So in the finder or in binoculars, Catalpha and, and Epsilon equally are separated by about two two binocular fields. So you just want to sweep this way until you get to the next brighter star, and that should be Epsilon. And that's the one that splits nicely. You've got an obvious double, and then it splits again when you put a little more power on it. So again, from a dark site, a glorious night filled with stars. You've got the great square of Pegasus. You come up to Enif, which is Epsilon Pegasi. And then you come over here to Catalpha, which is Alpha Equally. And then I believe this one, is either this one or this one. There it is, there's Epsilon Equally. And then there was Gamma, and Gamma was also a double star. And I think that was, oh, well, that's Delta. So Gamma's up here. Gamma's one of the parallelogram stars. So as there are no deep sky objects um, of note in Equilius, this will conclude our tour. Good night and good seeing.